So let's put together what we've learned about sketching quadratic functions, plus some stuff we remember from before. So first of all, a quadratic function, f of x equals x squared. The quadratic part is the squared part. Basic sketch is a parabola, vertex at the origin. So now when we look at g of x, let's look at how we've changed f of x. First of all, we have a minus 3 inside the parentheses before we square. Remember, numbers inside the parentheses with the x move it left or right. Minuses move us right. So we're going to take our parabola. We're going to move it right three spaces. This plus 4 on the outside moves it up four spaces. And this minus sign out in front flips it upside down. So let's put all of that together in a quick sketch. So we'll move right three spaces, up four spaces, and then draw an upside down parabola. So some things that you will be asked to do. State the vertex. Right, so that's that point right there. And we got there by moving right three spaces, and up four spaces. You'll at also be asked to find the y-intercept. Remember, y-intercepts are where x equals 0. So to find it for a function, you evaluate g at x equals 0. So let's go ahead and do that computation. We have the negative sign still out in front, parenthesis, 0 minus 3 quantity squared plus 4. So now, order of operations, I'm going to cover up that negative sign out in front. So now I have negative 3 squared. So that's going to be a positive 9 inside the parentheses. And there's that negative sign again, plus 4. So altogether, that's the number negative 5. But remember, x was 0. So when we talk about intercepts, we're talking about points. So we're talking about the point 0, negative 5 for the y-intercept. That means that if I were to carry my graph down, the parabola would include that point there on the y-axis. When you're asked to find the x-intercept, you set y equal to 0. Right? And when we're in functions, y often gets played by a g of x or an f of x. So we'll go up to our function and we'll put a 0 on the left-hand side. And then we need to solve for x. Typically, when you have your quadratic function in standard form, something squared plus a constant, you can use extracting a root to get to the x-intercept. So I'm going to add that binomial term to the other side. And then I'm going to square root both sides. By the way, before I continue, you should look and notice that when this graph continues down, it is going to cross the x-axis. That means I should be able to find two real number solutions, no imaginaries, no square roots of negative numbers down here, two real solutions to 0 equals the function. So square rooting, we have to remember to put on our plus minus because there are two answers. You can see them on the graph, or at least see where they're probably going to show up. So x minus 3, the square root and the squaring cancel. x minus 3 equals plus or minus 2. Move that 3 across, x equals 3 plus or minus 2. So your x-intercept, there's one at 3 plus 2, 5. Remember the y-partner is 0. And one at x 3 minus 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1. Again, our y-partner is 0. So it's going to go through that point there. And then 2, 3, 4, 5. And it'll go through that point there.